So obviously the world is talking about this emergency with coronavirus is touching basically any country. It started in China, but a lot of countries are involved, including the one where I was born in. This prompted me to think a little bit about how is artificial intelligence helping in this case right now or how it could help in the future. I did a little bit of research on the topic and I want to talk about specifically two things. One is the if you like the prevention side and the other is the cure side. Uh, there are two problems right now today that I can see. The first one is the detection of the disease because the, the uh, later you detect the disease uh, the more the disease spread and right now it seems that there is not a good technology or a good methodology to do it um, because of all the incubation stages and so on. And then the second problem obviously is that uh, in the moment that uh, the new virus come up there is not an immediate cure. So the first thing, the detection. Detection has uh, several problems. One is uh, of course the sensitivity of um, the instrumentation which it is at disposal today. Uh, the second is uh, also the cost and the third is the process like how do you identify um, the people that should go through this test. So right now most countries uh, take people through the test um, or through a deep test only when they have uh, uh, some kind of evidence that uh, there are some symptoms that could be uh, associated to that particular virus. So I found that uh, the University of California in Los Angeles has uh, developed a technique that combines three things basically. Um, it's a little bit scientific, okay, it's nanotechnology, it's a little bit of optical physics, and holography, and, uh, and artificial intelligence. And basically, what artificial intelligence does is automatically recognizes certain features in, in, in images that allow this technology to basically detect viruses um, in a much smaller percentage than other techniques, and two, doing it quickly and, and if you like at the cost factor that is not very high which is basically the, the, the problems that we have today. I don't think this is available today even if it was available can be integrated in processes where the governments and multiple governments in the world are involved so that, that always take longer preparations. So the other side of the question is uh, the vaccine. So the Wall Street Journal has uh, recently announced that the company by the name of uh, Moderna Therapeutics has uh, initiated the process of uh, testing the vaccine uh, with uh, human beings, but, um, but uh, the vaccine will not be available in the market um, anytime soon, so they, they're, they're forecasting that it's going to be sometimes in the fall that it's going to be available for in the market, because there are basically two stages to go through. One, I suppose, is the experimentation, so they have to verify that uh, it's not killing anybody, basically. How this company is uh, creating the vaccine. So they have gazillion, it's a public company, but they have received a gazillion of funding from all the largest uh, pharmaceutical companies in the world. And the reason is because they are working on a revolutionary technology that has, in their case, two applications. One is for um, curating cans, cancer and the other one is for curating viruses, okay? The technology is based on uh, these uh, molecules called RNA. So we don't need to understand a lot, but in biology, uh, this RNA is basically the, um, if you like, the messenger between the DNA and, the, um, and any chemical process that is going on into the cell. So it, it basically takes the instruction from the DNA and then conveys them somewhere else. Uh, concurrently, I've also found out that um, both Google and the University of Freiburg have developed uh, techniques based on uh, reinforcement learning that can, uh, basically given a problem, they can create the right RNA, the right sequence for the RNA, um, solving basically mathematical algorithms with artificial intelligence. They can do this in uh, basically 100 times less the time that was necessary with other standard techniques and with much higher precisions. Now, this is the cutting edge AI research, so I don't think that um, Moderna is using exactly this, this thing, but we can see that the world is evolving towards basically uh, having artificial intelligence is capable of synthesizing this molecular RNA and then these biotech companies could synthesize uh, the, um, the right MRA, mRNA to inject in a human being and then um, have the human beings to become immunized 
from uh, the virus at um, the virus of the moment. Okay, so in order to kill uh, to generate the antigens, the uh, this RNA molecule needs to be synthesized. It's like a, a sequence of instructions. So now, are you going to call this sequence of instructions? I speculate that they might be using some form of AI to do that, like to synthesize um, what the molecule should look like. Uh, the reason why I do this is because I looked into their LinkedIn profiles and they have quite a bit of data science on board. And I also saw that they have uh, finance, they have invested into research that has to do with uh, um, uh, synthesize, basically using uh, computer science and AI to um, uh, create the sequence of this uh, mRNA. And so uh, the government is always a little bit slow in, in adopting um, form, of, um, form of innovations, especially when they have to do with healthcare and so on. So maybe this uh, can have a little bit of help in uh, having people um, if you like supporting innovation as a science, a little bit more demanding from their governments, the more um, investments are made in these areas, and also, uh, if you like, uh, we take a little bit more risk in, in getting this thing um, going, um, going more. So with that is all, I hope I was uh, helpful, and I'll see you at the next episode.